Well, last week, we started a new series on the book of Ephesians. And I simply give it a theme, Unfolding the Blessing. Because in my estimate, the way we understand the blessing is really very limited. And by the way, the more you know the scriptures, the more you know the Word of God, your vocabulary will change. Like, before I will be saying, this is the permissive will of God, this is the perfect will of God. I really don't use it anymore. In fact, I have difficulty now looking at the scripture saying, God allows this to happen. I have, I have extreme difficulty now seeing it. Because when you say God allows things to happen, it seems like He has a permission for it to happen. Well, that's contrary to His personality. And so, I'll, I'll, I'll share that uh, with you more as we progress in our study. But when we talk about accessing the blessing, which is our main theme for today, it is one thing to say, you have money. Okay? And another thing to say, I can use the money. Right? Like, like for example, if the government puts a hold on your money, you will not be able to use it. It may be yours. But if they put a hold on it, you will not be able to use it. And so, the, the biblical fact is this. We have been blessed with every spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. We saw it last week. But it is also a fact. Most Christians doesn't know how to access that blessing. How do I know that? Because we keep praying, Lord, bless me. We are not accessing that blessing. And so I begin to look at the scriptures on this subject and begin to find out, you really need to prepare yourself, you really need to have uh, the, right, the, right, the right condition to access it. Just like any other blessing, you need to have a right condition. And if you don't have the right condition to access it, you won't be able to access it. Number I think the crime capital of the world is Chicago. We have the most difficult means of obtaining uh, license to, uh, to own firearms and, and to, 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 ca to carry firearms. But this is still the crime capital of the world. Okay? In Oklahoma, where, Jesus, where, where Joseph is now, not Jesus. Well, Jesus is also there, you know. Uh, in Oklahoma, where Joseph is now, the first time we, we, we went there, we were surprised because we were in a store, and this old man was carrying an AR-15. And he was carrying it, and he said, just putting it at the back of his, of his trunk. But the crime rate in Oklahoma is much lower than here. You don't dare commit a crime there because you know everybody owns a gun. And so you, you point a gun at somebody, they may point 10 guns at you. So the people there knows how to access it. Okay? That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. And, and so it is different for you to say, I have been blessed. Well, what's the proof that you have been blessed? If you have been blessed, do you even know how to access that blessing? Because if you don't know how to access the blessing, there is no difference with you not having the blessing. There is just really no difference. Okay? And so, <clears throat> if you know how to access it, even if you can access a little bit at a time, it's much better than somebody who knows they have the blessing, but cannot access even a little bit. Okay? So... We are blessed, uh, we learned last week in so many areas. And these are, these are things that we already have. We are, we are blessed because we are chosen, we, may, we study that. We are blessed with the adoption of sons and daughters of God. Redemption through His blood. The inheritance. Can you imagine the inheritance that, that we receive, the covenant? Well, you know the Bible says, the, uh, the will or the inheritance is of no effect unless the one who wrote the will is dead. The one who, that the stator has to die first, Hebrews. Well, Jesus died already. Which means, if Jesus already died, the will is in effect. Because the will basically stipulates 
in most cases, the moment I die, I want the following things to go to my son. I don't want anything to go to my daughter. I don't want I don't want anything to go to this person or that person. This is what I want with my will. That will cannot be carried on by the ex executor of the will unless you die. And so Jesus put forth a will. He said, this is my will, the one that we are studying. Well, he died. And because he already died, that is in effect right now. That's why the Holy Spirit is giving out gifts. Because you, you may say he's the executor of the will. Because you know how I know he's the executor of the will? Because Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will take from what is mine and make it known to you. He is the executor of the will. You see? And so the Holy Spirit is now taking what is Christ's and make it known to us, making it known to us. That's giving us access. But of course, that is not as simple as that because it requires spiritual insight. We also, that's why we are blessed because we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. I've, I've heard this so many times when I first got born again. The moment you get born again, you need, you need, the, you need the Holy Spirit in your life. But then I read in the scriptures that the moment you get born again, you have been sealed by the Spirit. And so the, the Pentecostals were not as good in explaining uh, the, the teaching on the Holy Spirit as they should be. But the moment you get born again, you have the Holy Ghost in you. Okay? And from what I explained to you, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is called the immersion in the Spirit. You allow the Holy Spirit to overflow in your life until it immerses you. Our problem is we have received the Holy Spirit and we won't let Him out. We, we say, well, the, the Holy Spirit is just for this. My relationship with God is just for this. So we never have the overflow. That's why in John chapter 7 it says, Out of His innermost being will flow. It's not going to come from the outside. You know, people pray like wait, they are waiting. Oh, Holy Spirit, come. He already came. He already came. And the Bible now is in effect that out of his innermost being, out of the depths of his heart, shall flow rivers of living water. It will flow out. It will not flow in. You see, there's a big difference in, in location. Because... Most people understand that the Holy Spirit will, will be poured in. He was already poured out. So what's happening now is the Holy Spirit needs to flow out. Flow out from where? From your spirit. It's there already. But a lot of Christians hesitate. Do I speak in tongues? Do I operate in the gifts of the Spirit? Well, for as long as you're talking like that, forget that. It's as good as if you don't have it. You see? And so... That is why the theme of this short series is unfolding, or you can say unpacking the blessings of God, so that we will have clarity of what we have and be able to use it. Now we need to remind ourselves that we are already blessed. These are blessings that God gave to Adam, gave to Abraham, gave to Jesus. Jesus is distributing it to us. So let's continue our study. We will now go to verse, verse 15. And hopefully we will be able to go to chapter 2 today. <clears throat> Ephesians 1 is starting on verse 15. This is why... Now, this is why. After the, the five blessings, we are chosen, we are adopted... We are redeemed by the blood. We have been, we have been uh, sealed with the Holy Spirit. We have the inheritance. After those are five. Because we have been blessed with these five blessings. This is why. Okay, so Paul is... Now, uh, the, un, the unfortunate thing is when you read your Bible, you have chapters and verses. If we can just remove that, it will be better for you to read, okay? But then it says here, this is why, because you have been blessed. You, you have the Holy Spirit, you have the inheritance, you have the redemption, you have the adoption, you are chosen, you are called. This is why, since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the love that you have for all the saints. 
This is why since I heard you have been born again. That's all it is. And your faith is active and you're de demonstrating love for all the saints. And you receive what I have been teaching you because this teaching has been taught by Paul before. He was just putting it in writing. I never stop giving thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, the prayer came out of verses 1 to 14, okay? Not all prayers that you find in the scriptures you can pray for somebody. Like when you tell people, God bless you, and they are serving the devil. Oh, why do you say God bless you? The blessing belongs to the saints. So if you tell an unbeliever, God bless you, whose God are you referring to? My God will not bless him. My God can, can uh, provide the, the air he breathes, the water he drinks, those things that in nature God has to provide so to sustain life. But as far as spiritual blessings, you cannot bless an unbeliever spiritually. You can ask God to, for his goodness to surround him so he can repent. But these blessings are for those who are part of the covenant. Okay? So if a person is not part of the covenant, this blessing does not belong to them. So it says here, I never stop giving thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Well, I thought they already know Him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of His calling, what is the wealth of His glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of His power towards us who believe, according to the mighty working of his strength. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about faith and love and the blessed life. The role of faith and love. Do not <clears throat> ever assume that the things, the moment you are blessed, that things are going to come your way automatically. Do not assume that. Too many people assume that and receive nothing from the Lord. Nothing comes automatically. Everything is provided for, but nothing comes automatically. This is a two-way relationship. God has a part, you have a part. God is not a vending machine that you only approach whenever you have need of Him. You need to develop a relationship with God. Let me give you an example. Why is it that murder is sin in the scriptures. Anybody knows? Now there is, remember in the Old Testament, there is what you call as the avenger of blood. The moment the avenger of blood finds the murderer, he is ordered by the Lord to kill. That's why death penalty in the scriptures. Kill them, kill the murderer. Why is, why is murder sin in the scriptures? What? I cannot... Ten Commandments, well, what? We work in, in, in the image of God, yeah. All of those are correct. But the reason why murder is correct according to the scriptures, uh, I mean, line by line, it says, because the murdered blood defiles the land. It makes the land unclean. The moment you murder somebody, you make the land unclean. Now, what is the problem with making the land unclean? God said, you have to kill the murderer because the land is defiled. And God says, and I dwell among my people. God doesn't want to live in an unclean place. Now, some of you perhaps are very comfortable living in a dirty house. Because it's you. But God is never comfortable with living in a dirty place. That's in the scriptures, you know. He says, the reason why the avenger of blood has to kill him, because the blood defiled the land, and I dwell in the land among my people. God is saying, I don't want to live in a dirty house. I want to live in a clean house, you see. 
That's why we see the parents of God departing in this. But I don't care what other preachers are saying. We have murdered a lot of babies. We have a lot of murder here. It defiles the land. And God says, you defile the land. I live among my people. I don't want a clean, I, I don't want an unclean place. You see? Now, these are simple things that are in the scriptures, but people overlook all the time. That's why I believe in death penalty. You know, for the guilty ones. Okay? Now, having, having said that, God is saying then, my blessing comes with me. You want my blessing? Let me dwell with you. But I will not just dwell with you. You've got to clean up. Clean up. Now, I have, I have done visitations in the past wherein I walk in and the house is dirty. Believe me, the moment I walk in and the house is very dirty, I find a million reasons why I have to be really hurry. I mean, if I can only command my phone to ring, so pretend it's my wife calling me, I will make it ring. Because the moment I see that the house is dirty, I don't feel comfortable. Even in my house, if it's very dirty, especially I, I tell my wife, I tell my kids, how can you live in a place like this? Because God wants clean house. And so, and so uh, but for some people, they're very comfortable with dirt. Like, like some people are very comfortable with sin. I'm not comfortable with sin. Do I sin? Yes, but I'm not comfortable with sin. You know why? God lives here. And God demands, you want me to live with you? Clean up. Now, I don't care what, what you have heard about theology, grace, mercy, love. It's this, as simple as it gets. You want me to live there? God says, clean up. Okay? Now, I've got, I want God to, to feel comfortable in my heart. That's why I've got to clean up. You see? Now, the moment that happens, he, he has with him the blessings. So, because he carries with him the blessings, what happened? It's ready, ready, readily available. You know. James is, is uh, wanting to go with his queer to Oklahoma. And so, I think he wants to, to uh, travel with them. I told James, well, when they go to Oklahoma, you should go with me. And I said, believe me, James. Traveling with Papa is a lot better than traveling with Kuya. Whether they know it or not, it's really a lot better when they travel with me. And DJ knows that. You see? But I have to be with him. You see? You want, you want the blessings of the Lord? You need to have God with you. He needs to feel comfortable with you. Okay? That's why when we say clean house, you want him to feel at home. By the way, that's what later on Paul said in, in his letter to the Colossians. Okay? So it's a two-way relationship. Our primary requirement for accessing the blessing here is to have faith and love. Now, this is not just faith. This is faith, uh, because most people will claim to have faith and love. This is faith and love that can be heard. That can be heard. By whom? Not by you, but by others. Yesterday, uh, Anne is, is sharing with, uh, with uh, Sister Emma and uh, Brother Junior about, about blessings. And you can, you can tell while well, well, we were talking, uh, they're, they're very excited. And, 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 and somebody else is there. And so she said, Oh, can you kill me? I'm going to ng mga blessing. Because, because people can see the, the blessing. If you are a Christian and you are blessed and you say you have faith, who knows you have faith? Yeah, who knows you have faith? They, they can hear it. The love that you have for all the saints. I mean, you, you gather around people and somebody was joking about sex and, and promiscuity. Oh boy, you don't feel comfortable. And people will hear about it. You, know. you want to serve God right? You want to raise your children right. You want to study the word of the Lord right. You are zealous for the things of God. People will hear about it. That's why they will taunt you. They will begin to say, oh, those are religious fanatics. They heard it. And love for all the saints. Love meaning it's an action. It's a verb this time, not a noun. But meaning you do something beneficial for others. You know, you are, this is how you make sure you really do something beneficial for others. A lot of people tell you, I love you, I love you. You ask yourself, 
whatever beneficial thing has this person ever done for me. If that person keeps telling you, it's like somebody, like your wife or your husband say, keep saying to you, I love you, I love you, yet he or she is not doing anything beneficial to you, that's not love. You begin to assess, what is this person doing on my behalf? Is it hurting me? That is not love. I don't care if he spits love out of his tongue. Because love does something beneficial for others. Love is kind. That's, that's in your Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love is a kind, okay? And so, this is hurt. Because you may not like this bunch of fanatics. Remember, remember when uh, one of our friends in the Philippines died, and so we sent help? Pastor Gino, G, Pastor Gino heard about it. And you know Pastor Gino, he's, he's always expressive. Pastor Gino heard about it. The moment he heard about it, he told me, I don't know he died. I said, man, you're always on Facebook. And you don't know he died? I said, they're always in Facebook. You're always in Facebook. How can you not know? He said, I do not know. I said, now you know. Immediately he said, I've got to do something about it. So he said, I've got to do something about it. The friend is already dead. You know, a couple of weeks later, he came, he came to, our, to my office with $500 saying, Pastor said, please, send this to the family. Yeah. Now, he, he, Pastor Gino may not tell you, I love you, I love you, I love you, but boy, he sure demonstrate love. Because he immediately did something that is very kind. So when somebody tells you they love you, one of the things that you have to ask yourself is, what beneficial thing has this person ever did for me? Are you here? You see, these are simple, practical things that you can find in the Scriptures. So, that is primary requirement for accessing the blessing. Our faith, our love has, has got to have some manifestations. Okay? In other words, this is an active faith. What is an active faith? A faith that acts. And this love is a love that moves. It moves to do something for the one love. And the scope for all the saints. Yeah, for all the saints. You, uh, you love the saints. It didn't say you love the unbelievers. You know, you want to, uh, you, you love the saints. You, you may not get it yet, but your attachment to the family of God should be deeper than any earthly attachment, especially if the earthly attachment is an unbeliever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I'm telling you, but really as a friend, is closer to me than any of my brothers or any of my siblings. Yeah. Uh, we, we went through a lot in, in such a way that, that is pertaining to God. We do things for the kingdom. We do things for the saints. And so my, my relationship with Brother Will is that which is closer than a brother. You see? Now, we may not see each other every day and and look at each other, oh, I love you. I... No, not, not, not like that. Man. You know? in, in fact, I have to be very careful. Brother Willie thinks I like some, some coffee. He doesn't give me coffee. He buys me a sack of coffee. I say, no, no, no. You know, because because uh, it, it's something that is beneficial. It, it's not forced. It's... And, and uh, a lot of people have heard about how he serves the church, you know. So you may say, I love the church, but what are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? Are you doing something beneficial? Now, this, these are very important things because of the prayers that Paul is about to pray. Because this prepares us for the next requirement. The first requirement will be faith and love that is heard. The next requirement in accessing the blessing is Prayer. Okay, prayer. Not necessarily your prayer, but prayer by others. Now, the Ephesians were not praying this prayer. Understand this, okay? Paul was praying this prayer. Have you, have you noticed when somebody is blessing you, what is your reaction to pray for them? You don't say, Lord, Lord, I just gave this person a blessing. Bless me. Okay, bless me. I just gave. No, this person will cry out to God and say, Lord, 
thank you for, for using him. So prayer comes out of your faith when you demonstrate your faith and when you demonstrate your love. Prayer by others comes naturally. You know how sometimes you say, you say to people, pray for me, and they don't pray for you? They don't see anything from you worth praying for. But when you, when you bless somebody out of faith and love, they naturally, you naturally pray for them. Okay, so, because Paul heard about their faith and heard about their love for all the saints, including Paul, because he benefited from their faith and love. Now, this is one of the most beautiful prayers that Paul ever prayed. He's got a lot of beautiful prayers, but this is really an exciting prayer. This is why, in verse 15, seems to indicate that the Ephesians, the Ephesians have already received these blessings. They are not accessing it. Okay? How do I know that? Because of the, the words used in the prayer. Um, so they have already experienced life from fallen to blessed. That is the this why. It means that they have, the, they have accepted the faith message. By the way, this is one thing that you, you, I can discern from the writings of Paul whenever he writes. Say he writes to the Galatians. What he wrote is something that he already taught them. A lot of the letters serve actually as a reminder. Um, and Peter even penned that down. While I'm alive in this tent, I will continue to remind you of the faith of the teachings. And so, these are not new information. There could be new revelations. These are not new information, okay? This is something that Paul already taught them. Maybe not all, but he taught them generally. And now he's reminding them. And the reason why Paul taught them is because they have accessed the faith level. They have, been, they have gotten saved. They have moved from fallen to grace. They have transitioned from being fallen to to blessed. Now, have you been born again? If you have been born again, then you have transitioned from fallen to blessed. And so, let us now look at the prayers of Paul for those who transition from fallen to blessed life. I can also see a struggle here. I believe that the Ephesians are struggling like most of us. Because we are generally taught on what the blessings of the Lord are. But then when we look at our lifestyle, we ask, why not? Why, why don't I have it? Okay, why don't I have it? Like, I, I sincerely believe all of you should feel very secure in the Lord through the pandemic. I really do. <laughs> you shouldn't worry about your job, your provisions, all of those things. Because the Lord has already provided those things. But how can we worry? We don't see it. Yeah, we don't, we don't see it. You have to see it. If, if you don't see it, you're lost. You, you are worried. You know. Why do we save money? Why do we save money? For the future? Well, Jesus said, don't worry about the future. Isn't that in your Bible? Why do we save money? Well, of course, you can say in obedience to God, right? But one of the reasons why we save money is so that we can leave inheritance for our children's children. It's not for us. Meaning, we are already taken care of. The reason why you can save money is because you're already blessed. Okay? And you are thinking about your future. Why do we work? to earn a living. I thought we live by faith. How can you say you, you, you work to earn a living? My Bible tells me you work so that you can do good works for others. But we don't work so we survive. You see, but, you, but most people think that. We have to earn a living. 
How in the world are you going to earn a living? God can snap the life out of you like that, even if you're a billionaire. You cannot earn a living. Life is a gift. It's a gift from God. How in the world do you think can you earn it? But because we are blind, we don't see it. You work so that you can do good works. But as far as provision is concerned, God already promised, I will provide. Now, the moment you see it, okay, this is why the prayers that later on I will mention will be very important. This is why you need to sit. That's why people cannot enjoy the day of the Lord because they have to earn a living. But if you know that God provides, you can celebrate it without worry. Why? Because God is your life. God is your provider. But if you can see it, you will provide for yourself. And I can use this term appropriately, and good luck with that on providing for yourself. Because you are not good enough to provide for yourself. Believe me. You can get sick. You can get fired. And so we always run short. We always fall short. That's why this blessing is very important. Okay, the first prayer. Now, remember, the Ephesians were also struggling. So now Paul heard about their faith. They are serving God. They are doing good things. Their faith and love is heard all over the world, at least in Asia Minor. So this is the prayer. <clears throat> Aside from the fact that they have received the blessings, the five blessings that we just summarized today and studied last week. Number one, first prayer, that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, in verse 17, would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. That's the first. That's why I'm saying you have to see it. Because here, the first is, would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Let me illustrate. Do you know why it is very difficult for people right now to accept facts? In the news. In the news. Why is it very difficult for people to accept facts right now? Confusion. Blindness. Meaning, if it's confusion, if it's blindness, they cannot see. They, they, they cannot see. And you know, I, have, I have somebody talking to me the other, the other week saying, you know, Trump lies a lot. I said, yeah, all of them lie. Can't you see all politicians are liars? I mean, if you simply say that only one politician lies, that will be wrong. Everybody lies. Okay, everybody lies. But you get to see the good things that is happening also. If you cannot see any good thing happening, you're blind. Okay, people say, how come God, how come God takes the life of this person? How do you know God killed the person? How come God is cursing this person? How do you know God is cursing the person? That's why in insurance business, they say all of these are covered, but not the acts of God. There is a hurricane, they call it acts of God. I thought they don't believe in God. Suddenly when something bad has, is happening, acts of God, they are blind people. Now the spirit of wisdom and revelation actually is a condition of the heart wherein you are open to wisdom and revelation. Because some people, you can keep teaching them. It goes in here, it goes out there. They're not open to it. You know? I, have, I have relatives that are very close uh, Catholics, and they told me in, no many, in so many times, so many ways, I was born a Catholic, I'll die a Catholic, then die as a Catholic. That's not what we are talking about. You can die as a Muslim if you want to. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about facts. We're talking about this is the truth. That's why, you know, you know how some Christians, the moment you teach about salvation, they are open. You talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they are closed. You talk about death, they are open. You talk about family sickness. Oh, my mama's diabetes. Me too. I mean, they're very proud. Oh, there is a 50. My, my mom got cancer. Oh, me too. I'm about to have it. They really believe it. But the moment you begin to teach them by stripes, you're healed. Oh, that's not for me. God doesn't heal anymore today. Close. 
So what Paul is saying is this. Now remember, our topic is accessing the blessing. What if God shows you these are my blessings? Will you take it? That's a different issue. Will you take it? Because what is the use of God saying these are my blessings if you cannot take it? That's why Paul said, first thing, because you have been blessed with these things, I want God to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, understanding that, that you may see it. A, a lot of people don't see it. Uh, you know how they say, if, if you cannot see it, you cannot believe it. If you can't see it, you can't believe it. So, Paul is saying, you've got to see it. Why do you come to church? Are there benefits in there? Because, look, you, you have, you have, that's why some people call calls us fanatics. Why in the world do you go to church? Because we see something they don't see. People stop coming to church, they don't see anything in it. Plain and simple. That's why for some people, it's just a religious observance. It's a religious obligation. They don't see anything. I'm telling you this, after I got born again, I was newly born again. I was fed by books of Gordon Lindsay and, and Till Osborne and, and all of those people. The church opens at, at, uh, at, at 8.30 for Sunday school. I'm there. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the morning service. And then in the afternoon, we have youth meeting. I'm in the afternoon youth meeting. And in the evening service. Monday night, we have youth Bible study. I am there. Wednesday night, we have midweek Bible study. I am there. Friday night, we have a service. I am there. A lot of times, we have weekly revival meetings. I am there. Yeah. You know why? And I don't want to be late either. You know why? Because I want to see what God is doing. I, I, I take my notes like, like DJ. I have my, my study notes and, and study them and go back to it during the week. I, I memorize a lot of scriptures because of that. And uh, I was just hungry. I'm, I'm really open to revelation. Why do I go to church? Because of that. Yeah. It's not a requirement. I wasn't a leader yet. It's just something that I long for. I'm open to that. So from a non-church-going Roman Catholic, I become a heavily church-goer, born-again Christian. You know? It's, that's why I, I don't understand when people debate how many times do you have to go to church. Why in the world do you debate that? Do you ever debate how many times you eat in one day? Or how many times you eat in one week? Some people are trying to get away with not going to church at all. And they have all kinds of excuses. I don't have that. You see? And, 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 and because of that, your eyes become more open to revelation. And this is what Paul is saying. You've got to see it. Now understand, in those days, they don't have a Bible. Okay? They don't have social media. And so for the believers to really be fed, they have to attend the uh, twice, by the way, twice a week. It was until the 4th century after the Council of Nicaea that Christians begin to come to church only on Sunday. But prior to that, we have Sabbath day celebration on Saturday because we came from, from the Jewish faith. Christians celebrate the Sabbath. So we have Saturday. And then the following day, Sunday, we celebrate the Day of the Lord. So two days in one week. Read your history. It's there. And then because of the absence of books and social media and all of these communications, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 4, they continue in the apostles' teaching in the daily breaking of bread. They have Bible studies. Yeah. Why do they do that? Because that's all the feeding that they can have. You say, well, Pastor says it's different now. We have our printed Bible, we have our digital Bible. No, it's not different. Because you have a printed Bible, you have a, you have a, you have a digital Bible. Do you read it? That's what I'm talking about accessing. What's the difference between the first century Christians not having a copy and us having a copy and not reading it? Nothing. You see? That's a big difference there. That's why Paul is saying, oh, that I pray that you will not lose this. And every time somebody opens their mouth with revelation from the Lord, you, you are into it. You are not somebody that, that avoids it. You've got to have hunger for these things, okay? Prayer that the eyes of your heart also may be enlightened 
so that you may know, look at this, what, what to know, the hope of His calling. Uh, all of us have different callings. We are called to be a body of Christ. But there is a hope for that. There is a hope of His glory. I started making a study on that one months ago. Uh, the hope of His if DJ goes to school, I hope she finishes. You see, when you hope for something, you're talking about an end result. Okay, an end result. She goes to school, and I hope she will finish. Why do you go to school? I don't know. What, what, what course are you taking? I don't know. Then why are you going to college? I don't know. There's nothing else to do. Why are you taking this course? My friend is taking it. I don't know, I'm talking about you. Why are you taking this? My friend is taking it. You have, there's no hope. You may have a piece of paper that says you finished something, but hopeless. You don't know what to do with it. There's no hope. And so there is a hope of glory. The glory of God in us has a hope. There is an end that it wants to accomplish. The hope of His calling. Our calls are very intentional. Remember last week we talked about being, being chosen. Very intentional. There is an end in sight. I, I read years ago uh, when, when, when St. Peter's Basilica was uh, in Rome was being built. So you have all kinds of carpenters, sculptors, bricklayers, concrete guys, plumbers, all of those things working together. So they were building the structure and somebody was asked, what are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm carrying all of these uh, stones so that I can get paid and my family eats. You know? Somebody asked, why are you doing this? Oh, this is a punishment from the Pope. This is my, uh, how do you call it, uh, penance. So, so I want to go to, to heaven. I don't want to stay long in the purgatory. So I've got to do this. So, well, and then somebody was asked, what are you doing? And he said this proudly. He's, he's laying bricks. He said this proudly. I am building a cathedral. I am building the house of God. You see, he is laying bricks, but the hope of what he is doing is to build a cathedral. Yeah. So what are you, what, why are you fulfilling? I mean, if, if, uh, if you are part of the worship team, why are you facilitating worship? What do you hope? You know, have you noticed that right now, artists come and go. They come up with a song, they have a beautiful song. And then it, it hits the record, mar the, market, the market, and tons of records are sold. And suddenly you hear this person doesn't go to church anymore. They have their own ministry. And then they're selling records, they become rich. What happened? Is that what you're hoping for? Is that what you're hoping for? They are, that's why they're missing it. The reason why, the reason why people practice, you know, some people think, I don't have to practice, because you're too proud. The reason why you practice is that you can have a better grip on what you're doing. Because when you have a better grip on, on what you're doing, you are no longer focused on the mechanics. You're no longer focused on the mechanics. You are now focused on the end result. You, you, want, you want the people to worship. And so when you are leading worship and, and you, are, you are seeing that people are not participating, you begin to make this. Same thing with preaching. You know, same thing with preaching. You don't, just, you, you, you don't just preach for the sake of preaching. You want to make sure that your people are being fed. Why? Because there is a reason why they have to be fed. There is a hope. Ephesians chapter 4, we'll decide that later, to build the body of Christ. We are doing this. Me as part of the official functions in the body of Christ, we're doing this to build the body of Christ, to equip the saints. There is a hope. Why do you get married? Can you imagine if, if the purpose of getting married is to have sex? Whoa. That will be too carnal. Why do you want to have kids? Oh, because I forgot to uh, take my pills. That's why some parents tell their kids, oh, you know, you're actually an accident. You're not supposed to come out. You're supposed to stay inside and die there. But too late. And so, and so some, some kids were born and, and the parents have no hope. Over, over what their kids are going to be. Oh, bahala na. What, what, do you, uh, what do you want your kids to be in the future? Oh, bahala sila sa buhay nila. 
You just don't care because there is no hope. You know, there is no hope. I'm, I'm reminded, uh, Andy's talking to Joseph this week because he, he came here. And, and, and uh, Andy told Joseph, remember Joseph, uh, no girls in your uh, apartment. You know the rules. Boy, we're, we're, we're hundreds of miles away. I can just imagine if Joseph is tempted, he, he can hear the voice of, of his mom. Joseph, you know the rules. <laughs> because my wife is hoping for something. You don't do things for the sake of doing it. I, I told you the reason why we moved to, to Edgebrook. It's not because we want to move to Edgebrook. Better school for our kids. That's why we, we did everything that we can. There is a goal. It's not just the house. We already have one. But the house is not accomplishing a desired result that we have. I know how many times I drove away some kids because of Shores High School. You know, the, the doing crazy things in the street and, and even in, in, a, in our doorsteps. Now, I don't want my family to grow up in an environment like that. So there is a goal. You see, what is the hope you're calling? What is the hope of what you're trying to do? The moment you have that hope, then your faith and your love will work. Because you will not do things to tarnish or to damage that. Okay? We will, we will see more of that as we progress. That you, may, that you may see also what is the wealth of his glorious inheritance in the saints. I like, I like the, uh, the descriptions. The wealth. The inheritance that you have is not something that is very meager. The wealth you can see that. And this is why we're doing this study, because one of my frustrations is because I know we are blessed, but I keep asking God, how come I don't see everything? You, know? you, have, you have to ask your Heavenly Father that. Lord, how come it's, it's like this? You know, if, if, if I pray and, and it doesn't, doesn't get answered, I ask the Lord, why is it not answered? What's wrong with this prayer? If I have trouble, I ask God, why, why am I having this trouble? Because what you need to understand is the glorious inheritance in the saints uh, is very abundant. Again, we will see this glory teaching once again as we progress this. And what is the immeasurable greatness of His power towards us who believe? According to the mighty working of His, his strength. Look at this. Sometimes we say, Lord, give me power or let the power of the Lord work in my life. That passage tells us it's already working in you right now. Again, we don't see it. We, we just don't see it. You know, I don't, I don't really look at, I, I get a lot of my news from different sources, but also YouTube. I was watching YouTube the other week, the other day, and I... I I told you about Subic Bay to be occupied by the Americans again. But then there's an interesting news that I've gathered there that uh, in cooperation with the U.S., the Philippines is actually building a military base up north in one of the islands, close to Taiwan. Meaning, the Philippines is being to try to shore up its defense against possible invasion from China. Now, when the government is doing that, it's not being told to everybody, but it's happening. Okay, it's happening. There are three aircraft carriers right now. Seventh Fleet is in the Pacific uh, region, and there are three aircraft carriers there, and the Australians and, and the British have sent uh, some of their uh, naval vessels there. Now, this is an amazing thing. Now, you, you will not find it in the news because they don't care to report any truth no nowadays. But, but it's happening, but you cannot see it. I cannot see it with my own eyes. We're not in the Pacific. You see? But it's happening. Meaning it is working. Whether we see it or not, the U.S. government is constantly making preparations to make sure if somebody attacks us, we will be properly dependent. That's why I like what Joseph said. Number one air force in the world is the U.S. Air Force. The number two air force in the world is the U.S. Navy. Now, when you begin to find out, whoa, you know, the, 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 Trump calls it uh, 
fake news, the false news. Look, look at it this way. They're, they're saying, look at China building arms. China has one and a half carrier. U.S. has 20. China has one and a half aircraft carrier. U.S. has 20. Where's the match there? But again, the news will never tell you that. You see? Now you can see it. That's why it drives fear, it drives worry, it drives all kinds of anxiety. But then when you begin to see, wow, all of these things, it becomes... I remember talking to one of uh, Joseph's friends. I, I, I asked, uh, because he's a, he's a pilot, one of these nuclear airplanes. Uh, he, he told me that there are so many of these airplanes, but only one of them needs to survive in a nuclear holocaust. I said, why? He said, if one of us survive, one of our planes survive, we will communicate to all submarines and all military vessels around the world. Each of these airplanes is capable of that. And he said, the moment we fly, there is, there is a representation from all branches of the military. I like talking to him. And so I asked him this question. I said, what are you guys worried about? Are you worried about Russia? I said, Russia? No. Oh, the way I said, no. I said, you, you mean you can take Russia? Oh. I said, Russia is no problem. You can take Russia. Oh. So what about China? I said, no. Oh. He said, China? He said, you can take China. I said, what are you worried about? He said, what we are worried about are rogue nations. I said, why? He said, because they have nothing to lose. There is no hope. Just we said that. He said, he said these, are the, these are the group that we are worried about because they have no hope. He said, they don't care if you blast them out of existence. There is none. They just want to create terror. There is, they just want, but he said, China, he said, look, China is a rich nation. They don't want to be destroyed. I mean, if you are already rich, do you want to be destroyed? You work centuries to build it up. You just want it to evaporate in one day? No, you, you will negotiate because you want to preserve something. But people with no hope. You see. That's why, for example, people who doesn't love God, they don't go to church, they don't care to serve God. They don't care about living. They don't care about bad-mouthing. And they, they have nothing to preserve. Do you think they are concerned about building the body of Christ? That's a joke. They have none of these hopes. Okay, that's why us who are believers, we are concerned about the body of Christ because we have a hope, you see. And now, this is what Paul is saying I want you to that your eyes will be open, that you may see the hope of your, of your calling. What we are doing is not aimless activity, there is something that God wants to accomplish. Let me read it again. Verse 20 He exercised this power in Christ by raising him from the dead and seating him at at his right hand, in the heavens, power above every ruler and authority, power and dominion, and every title given, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he subjected everything under his feet, and appointed him as head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. Look at this. Now, this power is working in us right now. Now, some, some, some people say, well, this, this, power is, this power is powerfully working in us right now. Notice how powerful this is. In verse 22, everything is under the feet of Jesus. Okay? Everything is under the feet of Jesus. Now, it's, it's very easy to be, oh, everything is under the feet of Jesus. You know what that means, guys? If everything is under the feet of Jesus, and we are the body of Christ, where is everything? Under our feet. And by the way, in the body of Christ, who is the head? Jesus is the head. Who is the body? The church. Now you say, well, maybe I'm just you know, some, some, some false humility Christians. No, I'm, I'm, I'm nobody. I'm, I'm at the bottom. Okay, let's, let's say you're the sole of his feet. Even if you are the sole of his feet, everything is still under his feet. The weakest member of the body of Christ is still stronger than the strongest demon in hell. Amen. Baka kalyo na lang kayo, di ba? But it's still under his feet. 
Now, can you see that? The reason why I say you cannot see that is because of the way you talk. Oh, my, my, my mama's diabetes at the age of 50. I'm going to have it also. Boy, you really, you really sound powerful there. You really sounded like you are powerfully overcome already. But if everything is under your feet, who is above you? Who is above you? God. If everything is already under your feet, only God is above you. But if God is for us, who can be against us? You've got to see it. Amen? You've got to see it. And the reason why we can't believe it is because we cannot see it. That's why we end up being worried about a thousand things. When God says, why in the world are you worried? Throw your worries on me. That's what I mean by cast. Roll it over. Throw your worries on me. But we throw our worries, but we put a rubber band. After we throw it, it comes back to us. Yeah. It comes back to us. That's why we make bad decisions because of our worry. I entrust this to God. And you take it back. I can't trust God enough. And Paul is saying here, I want you to see it. Because if you see it, then you can believe it. That's why when I tell you guys having kids, I have five kids. I don't know how many people here have five kids. I, the concern about their education, gone. Because if I'm raising godly children, this doesn't work if you're raising, raising sons of the devil, you know. But if I'm raising godly children, they are God's children. And God provides for his children. Remember what I told you about Abraham? His son is a co-heir with Abraham. And so my children are co-heirs with me. And so the blessings of the Lord in, on my life is the blessings of the Lord in their lives. That's why when Anne starts talking about sickness and disease, listen to my kids. They'll tell you, Mom, that's on your side of the family. Not ours. Because I totally brainwashed them with the Word of God. That uh, by stripes we are healed. Yeah. But you've got to see it. Some of you are still claiming a sickness and disease. Enjoy it. Don't ask me to pray for you. Okay. Just enjoy it. But the moment you can see that by His stripes you are healed and see it, then you can, you can believe it. That's a blessed life. The moment you can see that God provides. Well, look, why in the world do you think all this time during the pandemic I have not collected an offering? But as I told you, we are now 187 two left. God provides. You think you provide? You are blind. You don't provide for me. You don't provide for my family. God provides for my family. Amen. Now, it's your responsibility to follow the word of the Lord. Okay? But get it clear in your mind. Who is God in your life? The moment, the moment you see it. That's why Paul is saying, oh, that the eyes of your heart may be opened, that you will have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I want you to get this, he said. That's why Paul is not, is not worried about a, a, a lot of things. We saw worry from him, but he immediately overcomes it. The moment he's overtaken by the word of the Lord. I want you guys to see it. Because the moment you find the hope of his calling, the will of God for your life, if God puts his will in your heart, I don't care how outlandish, how big it sounds like. If God wants you to be this or do that, and that is his will for your life, he will provide. Amen. Amen. He does. Just look at me. You know, God told me I'm going to stand here. I did. Yeah. I, my, my dreams, my desires are always being provided for by the Lord. And so when a member of the church tries to serve the devil and say, we pay our tithes, we're going to leave the church. Bye-bye. I don't know you before I started, uh, when I started serving God. We don't know each other when I started serving God. Why are we together right now? God meant it to be. He has a purpose. If you see the purpose as I see the purpose, that is what glues us together. It's faith and love for all the saints. Amen? Now, let 
Now, the living, by the way, again, as I said, that, that power is working in you right now, whether you see it or not. It is working in you right now. It's there. You, you, have, you, have, you have to access it. Yeah. Uh, God wants to talk to you. God wants to reveal himself to you. All of that is there. You've got to access it. I wish I, I knew then what I know now. Then I would, I would have 12 kids perhaps, you know. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's an amazing blessing. Yeah. We, would, we, we, we already are, but, but we are blessing the world. John has a professor. Is he retiring, John? The professor that gave us the books. Not retiring. Yeah. He's, got, he's got some books, good books, uh, scholarly books. And so John is asking me, are you going to send them all to the Philippines? I said, I don't know if they're going to use it. But I told myself, what if we start building a library here? Yeah. Well, where are you going to put it? Well, my wife's office, she's not using it anyways. <laughs> you know, there are boxes there and bins and everything else. Why not put bookshelves? But then his professor found out we do this thing, so he's got a dad in France who also has books. These are scholarly books. Boy, I'll be willing to pay for shipping and handling to get my hands on those books. Yeah. So we bless the world. But people hear about, about what we're doing. These things opens up. And, and the more... The more you listen to God, things opens up. And you can see things. That's why, you know, when you give counsel to somebody, if you're in the Lord, you see, you see part of what's going to happen, and so you counsel along that, that vein. If people are obedient, they're going to get the result. If they're disobedient, they're not going to get it. Yeah. And that's what, what counseling is supposed to be. That's why one of the most disappointing that I have is when counselors, people walk, around, walk away as if, oh, I've got one option. No, it's not an option. If you are asking for the will of God, then let's look at the will of God from the scriptures. Let's find the will of God and settle with it. And then run with it. Then there is a purpose. You know, there is a purpose. That's why sometimes my wife will say, why don't you talk to the person? I said, no, I don't, I don't want to. Well, I have to talk to the person a million times. I won't listen. Why waste another breath? You see, because there, sh there should be a hope. You've got to see this. The moment you see this and you begin to see what God has already done for you, remember this. Your past have already left you. It's gone. Right? Don't worry about it. It's gone. Your past is already dead. It's gone. What you should pay attention to is today so that you can have a glorious tomorrow. But most people are, are very concerned about the past. What are, what are you concerned about? It's done. It's dead. Past is gone. There's even, we, we even have a song here. All my past is gone. I hope you believe that, you know. It's really gone. It's, it's gone. So you have to pay attention today so that your tomorrow will be a glorious tomorrow. So living or being alive accesses the blessings of the Lord. It's very important that you, that you be alive. When I say living, I mean alive in Christ, not in sin. Okay, look at this. Uh, let me just read this to you. I'll be, I'll be able to explain it more tonight. Chapter 2, verse 1. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you previously walked according to the ways of this world, According to the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit now working in the disobedient. We too all previously lived among them in our fleshly desires, carrying out the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts, and we were by nature children under wrath as the others were also. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with Christ even, even though we were dead in trespasses. You are saved by grace. He also raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus. So that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace 
through His kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For you are saved by grace through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not from works that no one can boast. For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared ahead of us to do. I like that, that last verse. For we are His workmanship. When did we first see that passage that we are His workmanship? Genesis. Of course everything is in Genesis. <laughs> what does Genesis say? We are made in the image of God. We are going back to that workmanship. The first Adam fell, now we have the second Adam. We are now His workmanship. Now this is one of the hopes of God. The reason why God is blessing us is lavishing us with His mercy and forgiveness and love and cleansing us because at the end we will look like Him. Okay, we will look like Him. We don't know yet, according to Paul, what we shall be. But when we see Him, we shall be like Him. You see? That, is, that is the ultimate goal. So when God blesses you and protects you, and pro it's not for you to become a millionaire, although you can be. It's not for you to have 100 houses, although you can have. It's not for you to have brand new. No, the end result where God is providing all of these resources for us, at the end, we shall be like Him. Why? Because we are His body. Can you imagine if you have a head, Caucasian, the body, African, that will... That will not look good, you know. <laughs> Can you imagine one of your eyes is Chinese, the other one is Japanese. So one is going up, one is going down. It's not going to look good. You know? we, need, we need to be like him. Yeah, we need to be like him. Amen? That is one of the hope. But, 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 but the thing is, you are dead in your trust, but you have to be alive. That's why God gives us the love for life. You have to be alive for this to realize to be realized in our lives. We have to stay alive. And we are alive, okay? So, well, we need to have our communion. So, I think I'm done for night, for, for, for now. We'll continue tonight, okay? Praise God. If you cannot attend tonight, follow us online so that you can have a more complete picture of what we are trying to study. Did you learn something? Hallelujah.